Good evening. Good evening, Rabbi. How are you? Hope everything is going well. Uh, my dad, it, it, he's returning. Uh, he's on his way. But now his brother is also. Ah, really? Wow, he's coming back. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, we, we saved him. Thank God. Wow. I mean, now we, God. <laughs> now wow. We, yeah. Incredible. Yes, but um, now my uncle is his brother, younger brother. He's also in the wow. hospital. Poor guy. Oh, I think it's a judgment time, and not just for uh, Jewish people, but for many, many. Wow. Yes. He's also in the same place there? No, he was in a different hospital. Okay. In Mexico, yes. Yes, okay. Hope everything turns out good. Blessed the Shem. Yes, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to you, Dollar, probably. So it says here <clears throat> in the tour, Hamatbilia da be arbaim se'ah. <clears throat> right, so now we're talking about that he's immersing his hands into a mikveh. Does that purify his hands, right? What happens over there? So let's see what he says in the Torah. So it says, So that's fine, he says, right? That's good. So, but the blessing is going to be a little bit different, right? Instead of you say because you're not really washing, you're immersing. So it says in Rambam also, So he says, Rambam, if you put your hands into the mikveh, right, uh, you're all you're all set. You don't need anything else, right? Um, but he says, if you put them, dip them into a water which doesn't have the size of a mikveh, or or drawn water, which is on the ground, lo So there it says it doesn't do nothing, right? Basically. So what does that mean? That the drawn water doesn't purify the hands. We already spoke about this in the Bit Yosef. You know, we said there was a machloket about this. So we said, right, uh, we said preferable not to do it this way. Um, only like Bidyavad, you know? If he has no other choice. 
צריך לומר, אלא מקווה שפיר דמה, הוא ברך על טבילת ידיים. אוקיי. קח את הרמב״ם מבירות ישראלי, יא אמסק, אלא בנטילה, רייט. סו, רייט, מתן את הידיים, וצריך לומר, אלא בנטילה. Right, so basically what, what do we get out of this? What we're saying is, right, that uh, if you dip your hands into a mikvah, you're all good. How many times do you have to dip your hand into a mikvah? The same as three, like three washings? Right. Or... Well, the truth is, right, the mikvah needs only one. One. <laughs> you don't... Yeah. Because, uh, because it's like <laughs> it's total purification, you know? It's, to it's absolute purification. So therefore, you know, it's very, very powerful, you know, so it doesn't need more than one. So, and, uh, yeah. And so it is Tevila Jadaim instead of Jetila. Tevila Jadaim, right. Tevila Jadaim. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's the way it goes uh, with the mikvah. You know, and probably, you know, I'm venturing to say you don't even need to dry your hands, you know, because your hands, are the water is pure. You know, so even drying you don't need. But it's it's the proper you know manners to <laughs> to dry your hands you know, so you don't you know you don't bless on with wet hands you know with the, the bread it's not proper to do that but but anyway you don't really need it though because uh, you know the water is pure the the water of the mikveh so that's why you know I was a little bit wondering yesterday when we said the name of the rosh that you know all the water today is impure right so I was wondering how do you say that right the mikveh is always pure. So then we we qualified that. We said, right, that uh, he's talking about in a vessel, right, not in a mikveh, you know, because in a mikveh, the water is, like, totally pure. There's no impurity in the mikveh. So that's the way it goes, yeah? Even if 100 people go in there, right, and purify themselves, the water is still pure there. It may not be so clean, but it's pure. <laughs> <laughs> That's something else. I'm not talking about that. May need, may need a good uh, right uh, filtration, some filtration, you know, for 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 cleanliness. Whatever. But uh, when it comes to purity, it's pure. Rabbi, I do have a question. Ah, uh, so where do they bring the water to the mikveh? How do they make it a living, running water? Is it's it it's all it's all magic. It's it's magic trick. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's not not a magic trick. Now what they do is like this, you know. They have a, uh, they have on the roof, right, um, like a like a collection, you know, a hole there that gathers the rainwater, you know. Okay. So when it rains, it goes down there, you know, and it collects into a tub. Okay. And uh, but that water, you know, is not so clean. It's it's like stagnant water, you know. So we don't we don't go in there. So what we do is, you know, we connect it with a tube to like a jacuzzi, you know? So since it's connected to the mikvah, it's considered to be also part of the mikvah. So you go into the jacuzzi, you know what I mean? Uh, but they call it a mikvah because it's connected to it. Because of that tube. Otherwise, with a tube, right. it, will yeah. vessel, it will be a vessel with no... Exactly. With yeah. oh, okay. It would just be a big bathtub, you know, basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's the way it works, you know? So... Uh, That's basically the way the, the way they make mikvahs today. In the old days, there was other things that they did, you know? There was other methods. What they would do is, you know, they would, like, dig, like, down, you know, into the ground to find, like, a spring, you know? And the spring would gush up into the, you know, into the pit. So that would be, like, the mikveh, you know? Because it was spring water or something like that, right? Or well water, you know? Uh, things like this. Uh... That was, you know, the good old days, right? Uh, but now, <laughs> we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, drawing our water, getting water from the well, and putting it directly, pouring it to a mikveh, it wouldn't make it pure. It has to be like a, a so tube. Thing, you know, drawn, water, drawn water is no good, you know? So, you have to, the water has to, like, flow by itself, you know? Okay. And you can't physically draw the water. Yes, yes. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Once you do that, if you physically draw it, 
That's why we can't use tap water, you know, otherwise we would use tap water. You know, so uh, the reason we can't use it is because it's drawn. Uh, so, yeah, that's the story there. So, um, we use now rainwater, right? That's, that's the basic way we do it today. But if you happen to be, you know, like somewhere, you know, like a lake or something or a or a right a beach, you know, that's also a mikvah, you know. So you can you can also use that, <laughs> even though it's a little bit tricky. Right? You have to do it the right way, but basically, you know, it can be used if it's you know if it's necessary. I remember one time, you know, uh, there was I had a friend here, you know, uh, this neighborhood, and he was going to the uh, you know some, one of those islands, you know, right there in, in, the, in the Caribbean, whatever. So he's going there. I think it was Bahamas, whatever it was. So uh, he said, right, you know, my wife will have to go to the mikveh, you know, one of those nights over there. But they don't have a mikveh, you know, in the Bahamas, whatever. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, you know, go to the beach. I told him. <laughs> you know I mean? right, so, you know, go to the beach. So, you know, he asked me, how do you do it? You know, like, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the method, you know? So apparently, right, there's a Chabad house over there, you know, in, in the... You know, in, in that place, right? And but they don't have a mikveh, the Chabad, you know, because the, the whole island is a mikveh, you know, the beach. So you don't really need it that much. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, right, the point is that um what he did was, you know, I told him I said like this, go go into the water, you know. Uh, but the thing is that somebody has to watch you, you know, when you're dumping in, when you're dunking into the water. So what happened was that the the lady, right, the the Rebbitson, you know, from the Chabad house. She went with her, you know, inside the water, and she watched her dip in. <laughs> crazy, you know, crazy. What can I tell you? You know, so that's the way they did it, you know? I had a situation similar, but when I was in my 20s, uh, I, could, I couldn't I get rid of a certain pain on my foot. Oh. And I had a dream that I needed to dip into the beach three times. Oh. And I and I went and I did it three times. My sister was with me, and the pain was gone the next day. Oh wow! wow. Never had it. Yeah, Never a lot of people go. Uh, a lot of people go to the Dead Sea, you know, for that, you know, for all kinds of treatment because <laughs> it's, it's very salty there, you know, whatever. Uh, but anyway, right. Um, the thing is, though, you know, the woman is supposed to go to the mikveh at night, you know. So like they were like, what? I, we want us to go into the water at night, you know, like in the beach, you know. Right? It's a little scary, you know, right? So I told him, okay, I, you know, I got, I, I found him a solution for that. I told him, I said, listen, you know what you do? Wait till sunset, you know? And once the sun sets, you can go in. It's not totally dark yet, you know? So that's the time, the best time to do it. I thought that was, isn't the halacha that if a woman, a woman can, does not need someone to watch her go in, that we would trust her to immerse herself? Always, you know, as a, as a, as you know, as a rule, uh, you have to be somebody has to watch you. That's it's always like that. You know? uh, when you when you're going to the mikveh for for nida, you know, we're talking about nida, right? And also for conversion, of course, you know, right. same conversion. Obviously, the Beit Din has to, but I thought that there, I thought that we had studied and we had read that. That's why we have the mikveh lady, right? Uh, you know, she's she's watching she everybody. Che she checks your fingernails and everything, right? Right, but, but she has to she has to watch you when you dip in. That's one of her jobs. Okay, so that's the story, right? So that's that's how they did it, you know. So yeah, there's a way to do it. You know, there's solutions for everything. <laughs> okay, uh, so it doesn't have to be pitch dark, you know. Just once the sun sets, you can go in. But when it comes when it comes to conversion, it's just the opposite, right? We have to do it in the daytime, you know. So it's a little bit different. But anyway, <laughs> it's a different story there. Uh, but here's the thing, right? For a man, you know, uh, since it's only a custom, you know, for the men to go into the mikvah, it's not really like obligation so much. So therefore, you know, they can even go into drawn water uh, because drawn water is only disqualified from the rabbis, you know, from the Torah, it's kosher. So for them, you know, for a men's mikveh can can have like drawn water. You know, a lot of times they don't. They have a direct, you know, it's, it's like a kosher mikveh, but, you know, it's, it's, we can, we're more lenient with men. They do have pools here in Dallas where yeah. 
Yeah. So they implement. Yeah, so, so for a man, you know, that would that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, even like a man really, you know, can just take a shower. That's also that also does the job. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> okay. So if if a man doesn't have a mikvah to go to, just go to the shower. You know, take a five minute shower, and you're good to go. Okay. So yeah, that's the story there. So let's go on. So that's the, that's the story, right? You, you know, so you need to dip your hands only once, as we said, right? A lot of people also, also ask me, you know, ladies, you know, one lady asked me, you know, like, how many times do you have to dip into the mikvah? You know, I told her, I said, one time. Why? Well, how many times do you think? Oh, they think, you know, some, some some people do three times, two times, seven times. God knows, we have all kinds of you know crazy things like that. But the truth is, one time is enough. You know, as long as it was a good one, it was a good dip. And once it's good, that's good enough. <laughs> as long as you get your, all your hair in there and stuff, you know, you're good to go. By the way, this is the biggest problem with the women, you know. All the hairs have to go in, you know. Because so, so since they have long hair, you know, uh, so that's why somebody has to watch them, you know, because sometimes the hair doesn't go all the way in. You know, so what we tell them is, you know, for women who with long hair, we tell them like, you know, put like a net over it, you know, like that, you know, loose net. You know, so this way the water will get in, you know, and uh, but the hair will not, you know, stick out. <laughs> so that's a good, it's a good way to do it. Just make sure it's not too tight, you know. Okay, yeah, all kinds of uh, mikveh issues. So anyway, right, we're going to get back to our issue here. Um, so we'll, we'll do Shulchan Aruch, yeah. Be dalad. There's one. There's one uh, crazy rabbi, you know, in in Florida, who, uh, you know, the, he he converts people uh, at the beach, you know, like so, you know, it's like a mixed beach, men and women, you know. He takes them over there, like several people at a time, you know, and he converts them, you know, so. And I, I, one time I, I texted him, you know, I told him, I said, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> you're converting, you're converting people, you know, at, at a mixed beach, you know, uh, you're not allowed to stand there. You, know, you can't even be there. Oh, can I can't tell you, some people are crazy. He doesn't know what he's doing, this guy. I wouldn't uh, uh, trust his conversions. I would tell them, do it again. A person who does conversions like that, you know, at a mixed beach, you know that he doesn't have irat shemaim. He doesn't. He's not a God fearing rabbi. Something's wrong there. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to Shulchan Aruch. And then he texted me later on, you know, he says, I stopped doing it. I said, oh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you. I still don't trust him. So it says here in the Shulchan Aruch, Right, so as we said, right, he he, he dipped his hands into uh, right uh, some uh, uh, spring water, whatever, right. Right, so it's interesting. Even if it doesn't have four, right, forty seah. Right, so it works, you know, because it's spring water. So spring water has a special, you know, uh, strength that a regular mikveh doesn't have. But even if it's less than you know the forty seah, 
it still works for the hands. So he says, um, as long as the hands are covered uh, in one shot, like in one time, they, in other words, uh, in one dip. They need to be lam, but if he was a regular mikveh, you know, some say it's like a uh, like a spring. In other words, you don't need the size, right? You don't need that size. But some say you need 40. You know what it is? I forgot to do it with yourself. So let me go back there, right? Now I see from the Shulchan that we're lacking here some information. So we got to do it with yourself first. I jumped. I jumped into this. Yeah. Yeah, so it's better to say here that uh, again, again, mashma the miniamina and peg kol basar. That's what it implies, right? In this chulin kuf vavam udalef, he brings the source of this regarding the mikveh issue. Kabe chamet veria, right? So he's he's talking there about hot springs of tveria, you know, which is also like a mikveh. Bim koman kule ama lo plige share. So if you're doing it in the place of the spring, right? No problem, right? Everybody agrees it's kosher. So he says, the Gemara asks a question there, right? Which is that if he can, you know, immerse his whole body there, all the more so he can do his hands, right? Which is even lighter. Um, so Rashi holds that, you know, dripping your hands doesn't, doesn't work. Unless you have, you know, the size, right? 40 se'a. Like a mikveh, kol gufo. Vechen katav gamken bepek bet chagiga. He also writes this in chagiga yud chedamut bet al matnitin. Right regarding the mishnah, the notlin yadaim cholcholin, washing on your hands for mundane things, the maser and also for maser. Vechen katav amorichi also morichi pek elu devarim. Abal arabenu yona. So he says right, but rabenu yona katav bepek elu devarim. He writes in this perek. Uh, which is Mem Alf Amud Alf. It says the Mina Torah En Shum Tevila Tzricha Mem Seah. Oh, so he says right. Interesting that from the Torah, no immersion requires forty seah of water. Ela Tevila Kol Gufo Bilvad. Only just your whole body. That's the only one. About Tevila Kelim, but when you when you're immersing utensils, Dai Berviit. It's enough with Berviit. Wow. The whole Hishu. But you know that means that the whole utensil can be immersed in that water. But right? But the rabbi said they didn't want that there should be a differentiation between utensils and the whole body. Therefore, they required to do everything with forty seah. Since we see right that. Um, um, when it comes to you immersing utensils, which is from the Torah, it doesn't require 40 seah. All the more so the hands, he says. Wow. Because it's only rabbinical. Right. Washing your hands is rabbinical. But immersion of utensils is not rabbinical. It's from the Torah. Because that's enough to cover the whole hand. Um, so he says he brought sources for his words, right? Proofs. The soft of Arab, in the end of the words, he says, It says, right, that uh, even though uh, when it comes to immersing the whole body, you need uh, you need Eruv if the war doesn't have 40 Seah. The Indian Tvilat Yadaim and Sarich Eruv. When it comes to immersing the hands, you don't need Eruv. Even if the um, uh, the water totally stopped from the spring, and Bahem Ela Rebiit, and Israel only has Rebiit, or they gathered by themselves, 
מהגשמים, from the water, יכול לטבול בו ילדה, כיוון שאין לנו שאובין, since they're not drawn water. אוקיי, על כאן השנה. So that was all from the רבנו יונה. אוקיי. So let's go on. וכן דעת הרשב"א, אוסר רשב"א עושים את אותו דבר. פרק כל הבסקור בשר, right? over there in the קולים. What does it say there? קופה ו' עמוד א', שכתב ואי קשה לך. So if it's difficult for you, he says, אי פחות מ-40 שאה, היח, תעלה לו. If it's less than 40 שאה, how is it going to work, right? תבילה, how are you going to dip your hands in there? ואפילו לידיו, even in his hands, just, יש לומר דיידיו כיוון דסגי לו בכלים ברביעית. So he says, since it's enough, you know, when it comes to utensils, with the רביעית, גם בקרקע, even in the ground, כל שמטביל יותם בבית אחד, as long as you do it in one shot, די לו דה אריכה דדלאי אסתתמה לט בה ארבעים שאה ואי לאו דה שאובין מתאבל בה אין הידיים את הידיים ואל תתאמה שלפעמים אפילו בתפילת גופו מקילין בפחות מארבעים שאה. So it's sometimes even immersing your whole body were lenient less than 40 שאה כגון לבעל הקלין, right, for like בעל קלין, that somebody was a seminal mission. שתקנו לתת קווים, right, so there you can do תת קווים, right, which You know, it's like a shower, basically. <laughs> like, like I told you guys, right? When it comes to somebody who has seminal mission, like a man, right? So there, he can just take a shower, right? Pour nine calves of water on his body, and he's good. That's what we're talking about. Rafa Pisha Zeh Bekarka says, even though it's in the ground, right? This Bekelim, Bezeh Bekelim, and this one is talking about utensils, vessels. Okay, so that's the end of it. The Rambam mechulek al zeh. So he says, Rambam disagrees with this, right? Because he wrote in the Perush of Mishnah, he writes in the commentary in the Mishnah, Perk Aleph, Bemasechet Mikvot, the Mikvot, Lashon Tosefta, he brings Tosefta, Kom Akom She Adam Tovel Yadayim Bekelim Tovlim, En Adam Tovel En Adam Bekelim Tovlim, Be'afal Pish Yavi Rambam Lashon Tosefta, even though the Rambam wrote the language of Tosefta, זו על דברים שטעונים טבילת ידיים, regarding things which need washing hands, immersing hands, ואין מספיק בו בנטילת, and it doesn't really have enough for, it's not enough to wash your hands with those things. כל מקום, משמע דהוא הדין לדברים שמספיק בהם. So it says, uh, it implies that it's enough uh, regarding also things which, uh, you know, that it's enough just to do netilat, to do it, wash your hands. She'im ba liatbilam, tzarich liatbilam mikveh. If you come to immerse them, you have to do it in mikveh. She'adam tovel bo, that you can immerse your whole body there. V'lachen katab beperk vav, b'inchot b'inachot. So therefore he writes, right, in the laws of blessings, kolat tzarich netilat yadayim, whoever needs netilat yadayim, washing your hands, v'itbil yadda b'me mikveh, and he dipped his hands into a mikveh, and not tzarich davar achel, you don't need anything else, right? So in other words, you see from here, that the Rambam requires like a real mikveh, you know? Not just a little bit. As opposed to the opinion we saw before, right? Uh, Rabbeinu Yon and the Rashba. Okay, so goes on. That's only, he says, water which is not flowing. Right? Not gushing, right? It's just like gathered rainwater, right? Kills the things like this. But when it comes to, uh, right, as we said, a spring water, right? So that's different. It's, it's a higher level spring water. As long as you can cover your hands, you can, you can immerse your hands in there. You can even immerse your body in there. According to him. שהרי כתב בפרק ט' מלכות במקוואות, כי זה בעצם לא זה מקוואות, שהמעיין אין למימיו שיעור, so he says um, that when you have a spring, right, and there's not enough water there, פוליסיאה, אפילו כל שהן מתארים, even a little bit will purify. כתב הראש בלכות במקוואות, the ראש says, לא זה מקוואות, שכן דעת הרעבד, רעבד also holds like that, גם כן, ואם כן, לפי דעתם, so if so, he says, according to them, for sure, he says, for immersing the hands, right, you don't need the size for the spring water. 
וזהו שדייק הרמב״ם, אצל הרמב״ם את הדידוסס, ולא הזכיר בהלכות ברכות, he didn't mention laws of blessings, כבי אם התפילה במים, regarding if he right, uh, immersed him in the water, שאין להם שהוא רוצה לנהל נפסייז, מעיין, אלא מקרה, right, this, yeah, so it's, it's a מקרה. One second. Yeah. אבל הראש חולק עליהם, the ראש argue, argues with this, וסובר כדברי רי, he holds like the רי, that לא אמרו מעיין מטהר, that he says, right, when they said that the spring can purify, בכל שהוא, even with a little bit, אלא לטבילת כלים, that's only regarding utensils, but not your hands, right, apparently. אבל לטבילת אדם, when it comes to a human, אפילו קטן באי ארבעים סאה. So he says, even, uh, right, the child, whatever. needs 40 seah, up, up in my hand, even with the spring water. So according to them, it could be that immersing your hands also requires 40 seah. Just like uh, the words of Rashi. Okay. Power. The Rambam and the Rambam. Or, the uh, Lord Ba'el, or he doesn't need. Rashba. So he's, he also, he says, right, since, you know, washing your hands is rabbinical, so therefore we go lenient, right? We go like the lenient opinion, as we said, right? When it comes to washing hands, we go like the lenient opinion. That's the way it is. Okay, so that's the story there. Uh, so let's see the um, Shulchan Ruch. Now we can really see the Shulchan Ruch, right? Uh, before we were, we were a little bit too early here. So it says here, right? If he dipped his hands into a spring water, right? Even if he doesn't have 40 seah, I'll tell you As we said, right, we're lenient, so therefore we say that it does work. As long as it, can, it has, there's enough water there to cover his hands in one dip. You have to have at least that much water. Because, you know, you can't do two dips, you know, this not, doesn't work. When it comes to mikveh, you know, immersion, things like this, it always requires one dip, not two, not two separate dips. So it says, what about if you do a mikveh? Some say it's the same thing as a spring. You know, in other words, you can like, you can uh, use less than the like a small amount of water. Right? Uh, so it says, some say uh, it needs four, uh, 40 seah, like, you know. So he says, right, we go here, right, lenient, as we said, right, in both cases. Whether it's spring water or it's... Um, Mikveh water, it doesn't require uh, 40 seah. Interesting. So he says in the parentheses, but he says, you, should, you know, he says you should be stringent with this. In other words, try to use 40 CA, right? Um, at least when it comes to the uh, mikveh water. But maybe he's also talking about the spring water as well. Let's see what the Mishnah Bura says here. Yeah, so he says, you know, in a pressing situation, you can be lenient, he says. So, yeah, well, you know, what can I tell you? Let's see what else he says, Mishnah Brua. Yeah, he just explains everything. That's nice. Okay.
Yeah, so the Mishnah also explains something else interesting here. How do you how do you have a mikveh, right, which is doesn't have the size of 40 se'ah? How does that happen? So he says, right, it happens like this, that, uh, uh, you know, some rainwater gathered, you know, and just that doesn't have a size. That's why it's less than that. You know? So we call that a mini mikveh. <laughs> you know, so it's it's no good for the body, but it's good for the uh, for the hands, right? That's what I was saying. Okay. And also the same thing for a spring, right? Spring water. How do you have a spring water which is less than 40 se'a? Because, you know, gushed out and, uh, you know, it's just it's a small amount. So, you know, spring water, but, the, you know, the amount is small. Okay, good. That clarifies everything. Okay, that's all we need. Okay, so I guess we can go to the next one, which is Tetvav 15. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, it also adds uh, more right uh, light to the issue of the mikveh as well. Uh, you know, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let's take a look at it. Sheds light to it. Okay, so it says like this, right? In in um so here's the thing, right? You have now we're talking about rainwater, which is flowing. You know, um, so it's like a stream, you know, of rainwater. That's basically what we're talking about. So it says obvious that you cannot dip your hands in there. The tour, the tour says. Even if it has 40 se'ah. Even if it has 40 se'ah. Because it's not fitting to, to immerse in there. Not the dumb. So the Gemara is going to say that Rashi is going to say that Rashi is going to say that Rashi So he says the Rashi also says like that and the Rashi is going to say that 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 Rashi But the Rashi says Yeah. Like this. He says the Rajbam, he dips his hands into a river, right? Or a place where, you know, there's gathered water, like a puddle or something. Which is fitting for immersion. So then, right, it, uh, it does work. Oh, Dr. Rabbi, 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 I'm sorry, yes. When you say puddle, even standing water, would that be okay? Yeah, a puddle, like, you know, like a big puddle, you know. <laughs> okay. You know, like, like the one you, you know, you drive through with your car, you know, and it, it splashes water on you. <laughs> After <laughs> one, rain. One of those, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So it says here... Uh, it says there's a doubt if we're going to be lenient also with this. So let me just explain to you guys a couple of things here. Very interesting, right? Um, what is the problem when rainwater is uh, moving? Why isn't it kosher? So stagnant stagnant rainwater is good, right? We said that's how we, you know, that's how we, right, uh, that's the way we make a mikveh, stagnant rainwater, you know. So then, why is flowing rainwater no good? Not enough uh, water. Uh, even if you, water? even if you have enough, it's not good. It's not good, mm -hmm. right? So why is that? Uh, because right, uh, the rabbis decreed on that, you know, not to use that. And there's a special name for that, right? It's called katafres. Katafres is 
flowing rainwater, right? A stream of rainwater. That's what it is, you know? So the rabbis decreed not to use that because it resembles uh, other types of flowing water which are not kosher. So because in, in order not to make a mistake with that, they, they disqualified, you know, like flowing rainwater. Uh, they disqualified that. So that's the interesting thing, right? That uh, when it comes to spring water, it can be flowing, and it's still kosher. When it comes to rainwater, it has to be stagnant. So this is the problem over here, you know? We're talking about that it's flowing. Uh, and therefore, he says, right, since you can't immerse your body in there, you also cannot immerse your hands in there as well. So Roy, let's say you have a bucket outside and it rains, uh, and it's a big bucket, and you collect that rainwater. And yeah. Can you wash your hands the next day and say that it's a that that it's right. so? Yeah, that's that, that's exactly what we just said, right? That uh, in the last halacha, that uh, even though there's a machloket about that, you know, we can be lenient with that. Okay. We yeah, with a bucket of rainwater, you know, something like that. Yeah, as long as it's enough to, you know, put your hands in there, right? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, so that's good. That that does work, you know. Uh, there is a machloket, but uh, there's room to be lenient there in the Shulchan Ruch. But, so getting back to what we said, right, that here we're talking about flowing rainwater, you know, so that's no good. So now let's get into all these opinions, right? Who, who's saying what, right? Uh, so let's let's itemize everybody here to what what they're saying. So he says, right, that uh, Rashi says, you know, it's not fitting to, to to dip your hands in there because it's not fitting to immerse in, either, in there either. So he says, also the Rashi seems to say like that, and then he brings the language of the Rashi. Right, he says there a matbil yadav. Uh, Benahar, he says, if you dip your hands into a river, or a place where, you know, get some gathered water there, right, uh, for Yadav So then it does work, right? So in other words, he's telling you that it only works, uh, you know, if it's stagnant water, not when it's flowing. So... Uh, you know, and by the way, we had discussions about this a couple of years ago regarding, you know, if if a river can be used as a mikveh. You know, I, I, I posted about this already a couple of years ago, a few years ago. So what's the question with the river? Because the river is a mixture of rainwater and spring water. Usually that's what it is, you know? So the question is, you know, what what's the majority? So, you know, it depends. It's seasonal, you know? Sometimes... Certain seasons, there's more spring water. Certain seasons, there's more rainwater in there. So, you know, but since it's flowing, you know, so if it's mostly rainwater, it's not kosher because uh, it's, you know, what we just said, right? Flowing rainwater. So that's why, you know, the Shulchan Ruch says, right, better not to use river. Why is that? Because uh, it could be, you know, it's mostly, mostly rainwater in there. It's no good because it's flowing. Uh, so that's why we try to refrain. You know, we refrain from using rivers for immersion of, um, of you know, uh, utensils or a woman, right? Uh, things like that, you know. We try to refrain from that. But when it comes to immersing your hands, so then the river is fine, you know, because, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, we're not going to be so stringent. You know, it's only rabbinical. So, you know, it's, it's, we're not going to go that far. Because there's, you know, there's... Uh, it's a pretty good chance that there's uh, a lot of spring water in there, mostly spring water, the river, you know? So we're not going to go that far. So therefore, the Rashba says, right, if you put your hands into the river, you dip your hands, it's kosher, you know, for to, to purify your hands. And then he talks about, uh, you know, gathered water as well, you know, that's also kosher. Um, yeah, so from there, right, uh, the Bet Yosef learns that the Rashba also holds like this, like the Rashi. 
same opinion here. Um, okay. But then he brings Rabbeinu Yona, right, who has a doubt about this, if it's kosher or not, to use a, a called, uh, flowing rainwater. Okay, one second here. Let's just make sure we got everything straight. We got Rabbi Yona who has a doubt, and um, so okay, that's that's where we stand over there. So it seems like um, we should be stringent over here, you know, uh, with this one. Because we don't really see anybody who actually permits this. <laughs> so we can't really even call it a machloket, perhaps. You know, there's no machloket here. So let's see Shulchan Ruch. I guess we'll stop with that. We'll stop there. Yeah, so says Shulchan Aruch like this, Mege Shamim Shehem Zohalim, right? As we said, right? We're talking about uh, flowing rainwater, right? Streaming rainwater. Even if it has 40 se'ah. So it does have the size. You know? So it says there's a doubt about this, you know? Interesting. Oh, good. Yeah, so he paskins basically like uh, Rabbi Yona, you know? There's a doubt there. So, I guess that means that, you know, we shouldn't use a lechadchila, right? Lechadchila, don't do it. And also, even if you used it, because you have nothing else, right, so you would not bless on this, you know, since there's a doubt. When there's when there's a doubt, you don't bless, right? Uh, when in doubt, throw it out. Same thing over here, you know? So, there may be room to rely on this, you know, when there's nothing else, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, d d definitely we wouldn't bless on this. No question about that. Let's just see what the Mishnah Bura says, if he has anything anything to add over here. To illuminate uh, right, uh, our minds here a little bit. Yeah, pretty much what we said. What else we got here? Anything else? Let's see. <laughs> so he says, right, that since there's a doubt, he says, so, you know, if you did this, he says, now you have a, a better way to do it. So do it, you know, the better way, but don't bless, as we said, right? Because there's a doubt. So the Grai says, is, is like stringent here, that it doesn't, you know, that it definitely does not work. So in other words, Shulchan Ruch says there's a doubt. And the Gra says that uh, there is no doubt. It, it's definitely bad. <laughs> okay, so there you go, right? Um, interesting. So, you know, we do Paschal, you know, like the Shulchan Ruch over the Grah. Right? So that's the Halakha, you know, that there's a doubt about this. Okay, very good. So, Bezal Hashem, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness, right? Uh, one of our regulars is a little bit under the weather tonight, you know, uh, Bruria, you know, so she's not feeling well. So, say a prayer for her. Yes. And uh, Bezal Hashem, hopefully we'll see her tomorrow. God bless you all. Have a good night. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. Lailah Tov Chazak Baruch. We'll see you tomorrow, Bezad Hashem. Amen, amen. Pray for our valiant soldiers doing an amazing job.
God bless. Thank you.